Welcome to an abridged history of the rise and fall of free radical design, or why we're probably not ever going to get time splitters 4. There's a huge amount of hearsay about what happened to FDR, so please take this with a pinch of salt. Founded in 99, Free Radical Design formed by those responsible for GoldenEye and Half of Perfect Dark, both hugely influential and important games on the N64, they are now mostly known for their fan favourite Time Splitters series. The cultishly popular second site followed, and in the eyes of the gaming public, they were flying high and could do no wrong. An always amazingly small team of talented individuals, the five founders branched to just 15 people to make the PS2 launch title Time Splitters, and this was in a development cycle of just 16 months. 14 more were brought in to get the extremely successful Time Splitters 2 onto the shelf, and they had the foresight to retain control of their IP. This meant that they could make what they wanted and were, by and large, left to it by Eidos. Later, they got into bed to make a game for Ubisoft, which turned out to be Haze, which led to a financial thrashing, and that was the end of that. Game over for FRD. However, that one terrible game did not put the nail in the coffin. Bad luck had struck a number of times before. Second Sight was originally titled Redemption and was to be Free Radical's first release. But it turned out to be harder than expected to go from the first person Goldeneye to a fully third person title, so Time Splitters 1 and 2 went gold first. After this, the development of Second Sight had changed hands from IDOS to Activision, and in November 2003, Activision were cancelling in development titles by external developers left and right. In total, 10 in all went, with Second Sight originally in the firing line. Eventually, it turned out to be the one that got away. Free Radicals' insistence on retaining their own IPs stopped them from going under, and it allowed them to take the near-complete game Job Lot to Codemasters. However, Codemasters wanted it out ASAP, but did not have the bank for a normal marketing budget, so it was released basically on word of mouth. More problems arose as the stars aligned on the genre of telepathic and psychokinetic action games, and the remarkably similar PsyOps by Midway was released two months beforehand, so Second Sight was sunk before it was able to even make a splash. Back to their other IP. And EA got its mitts on Time Splitters, becoming publisher for Future Perfect. But EA were releasing GoldenEye Rogue Agent around the same time. Irony at its finest as they put all their marketing budget into that shit game, which was gripping tight to the coattails of the memory of the original made by those Free Radical founders. And EA gave a pittance to Future Perfect. In terms of sales, Time Splitters 3 did relatively well, but in terms of return for Free Radical, not so much. So then Haze, and in 2008, Free Radical seems to have lost control of their ability to make good games. When making Haze and pigeonholed by Ubisoft, they were made to lose their trademark cartoon visuals, lose the humour, and to parrot the breakaway success of Call of Duty, they had to change from third person it was originally planned to first person halfway through the development. They were also tasked to make a violent military first person shooter that unfeasibly had to hit a UK 15 rating. Delays stacked upon delays, and so compromises had to be made. Then Yubi sold the exclusive rights to Sony, so it had to be released solely on the PS3. Hayes' project manager, Martin Wakely, stated candidly, It has never really ran on the PS3. In hindsight, this fault was down to FRD themselves, as rather than using existing and available technology off the shelf, they kept everything in-house and used a proprietary engine. The game was battered critically, appearing in bargain bins mere weeks after release, and was almost totally forgettable. Free Radical then went into meltdown. Excuses can be made, but in the end, what was produced was a commercially and critically bad game. Budgets for AAA titles were ever-increasing, and Free Radical was severely in the red. At the same time, Free Radical had been making, and depending on who you believe, were very close to a final form of Battlefront 3. Sadly, this truly was the straw that broke the camel's back. This was cancelled and is a completely different story too long for this video. If you click on the screen now or on the link below, you can see some other content we've made on this very topic. So, December 2008, Free Radical sadly went into administration and 140 of the original 185 staff were let go. In February 2009 though, it was announced that Free Radical Design had been purchased by the German developer Crytek, and they were to be called Crytek UK. The only games made by this subsidiary were the multiplayer elements of Crisis 2 and 3 and the Xbox 360 port of Warface. Not so great an output for a company that made its name with originality. 
then more financial difficulties and restructuring meant the closure of Crytek UK. The story of Crytek is also one definitely for another time. So fast forward to July 2014, Crytek announced a strategic deal where the rights to Homefront, including Homefront the Revolution, were transferred to Koch Media, and this included Crytek UK. The team continued its work on the game, now as Deep Silver, by Dan Buster Studios. Homefront the Revolution came out to mixed reviews, so God knows where the staff are going to go next. So in terms of Time Splitters 4, We've got no idea where it's going to go. The original staff of Free Radical have been scattered far and wide, and being such a mess, it seems very unlikely Time Splitters 4 will ever come out. The fan made Time Splitters Rewind is forever in development, and all in the worlds of Time Splitters is rubbish. Yeah, it's time to split. Right, whatever.